technology has moved so fast, uh, you know, since the creation of things that we take for granted, like the telephone or the light bulb. Nowadays, it's technology, it's everything. Law is always going to be catching up to technology. La technologie amène des nouvelles situations, des nouveaux problèmes en droit. If technology develops without the law, so once technology is developed, then usually the laws have to be decided upon to govern the technology after. The technology will do what technology does, and that's disrupt the marketplace. I mean, the history of copyright is a history of reaction to disruptive technologies. I mean, the first copyright statute was a statute of Anne, uh, which was a response to the development of the printing, printing press. So copyright law policymakers are always playing catch up in this space. Technology is, is moving and, and it's very difficult to last. Uh, it doesn't mean that you that you stop trying. It doesn't mean that, that you say, okay, we throw up our hands and we, we sort of leave ourselves in the hands of the technologists and, and tech companies and whatever products and services they bring to market. We could simply say it's illegal to have this kind of technology on your on your uh, on your computer, or it's illegal to develop this technology, or it's illegal to distribute this technology. That is, I think, a, a really bad way to go. Um, anytime you get a, a technology prohibition. Um, that's an innovation prohibition. Privacy. What's mine is mine and what's yours is yours unless you give me permission to do something that's yours. Then, yeah, I have no idea. Privacy is, is, is what the rest of the world can find out about you. One of my friends was fired from work because her boss saw the pictures on Facebook, it was actually on the news. So for me that is the definition of privacy. For um, the government as well as corporations and your employers not getting involved into their personal life. La vie privée a des implications pour la dignité personnelle. Uh, et il y a toutes sortes de, 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 de renseignements uh, qui sont peut-être des renseignements qu'on veut partager avec des amis plus proches in this day and age everybody uh, has the ability to, to really peer into what what and who you are and that parameters have changed a lot in the last couple of years I make my Facebook page private because I worry that people will look me up or I take my picture off my Facebook page so that if they do find my name you can't confirm that it's me même si dis oh oui c'est privé mais écoute je vais pas lire une 45 pages sur la situation, je veux juste assumer que c'est pas privé. Like I understand that in order for Facebook to exist, they need to have something to sell, and I know what they have to sell is personal information, so they're trying to find a balance. People like Google, people like Facebook, these are people who don't have much of an interest in your desire for privacy or anonymity. Uh, they have you know basically uh, market structures built upon trading in your personal information. Some people say, well, who cares, right? Who cares that they're following you around? They're offering you a great service. Um, you know, what's, what's wrong with it? Nothing, as long as you're fine with spying all the time, right? And I give you the analogy. I mean, what if you were out, you know, on a Saturday afternoon doing your shopping, not doing anything sensitive, you know, but, you know, going to the grocery store, you know, going to uh, do some clothes shopping, maybe stopping by the market, picking up some extra groceries. And there's somebody in the back seat of your car. It's not saying anything. It's not bothering you. But as you make a stop, he makes a note. As you get it back in the car, he notes down the time. As you drive to the next place, he makes another note. That would bother me. And I think that would bother most people. Just that spying all the time. Not intruding, not bothering you, but there, watching. Privacy is kind of disappearing. I think it's a big concern in our technology age because everything is so available. You want to keep some of the stuff just to yourself. You can't control what's going on. You see all, a lot of things like a big things like uh, those pageant winners. You find one picture randomly of their party and stuff like that uh, on the internet ruins everything. And like you can't control what people take parties at. So like it's almost as if you have to go out in life thinking anything you do potentially could be on the internet. For a lot of people, there is this sense or expectation that somehow they are out there and on camera all the time. And that, of course, stems from the fact that it's only in the last decade or so that now literally billions of people walk around with essentially cameras uh, in their pockets. I mean, that, that, I think, perhaps more than certainly the Internet. We focus so much on the Internet, but if you want to think about what has changed 
uh, privacy or at least the ability to access this kind of information, it's the cell phone. D'un côté, on peut dire qu'il faut protéger ces renseignements personnels pour ne pas être victime d'une vol d'identité. Alors, c'est important de, au niveau de sécurité. C'est important de ne pas divulguer des renseignements euh, concernant euh, notre maison, le fait qu'on est en vacances, etc. Alors, il y a des questions de, de vie privée, sécurité qui sont importantes. Why do I feel secure? Because I'm not putting on any information that I shouldn't be really sharing. Je me sens en sécurité, peut-être parce que je suis très naïve, puis que je suis rendue dans la cinquantaine, fait que je suis moins avertie peut-être que des gens. J'en reçois beaucoup de spam, mais c'est évident, c'est d'une évidence. Il faut vraiment être naïf pour l'ouvrir. Tell you you're from TD Bank or whatever, and they'll go to a website, but like, you look at it, it's a little bit different. Those things worry me a bit, but Again, there's a lot of things you can't control. Identity theft, you really can't control. I, I don't think that there's much more risk through the internet with identity theft. I feel as though if somebody's out to do that generally, they can. For people that aren't aware, then yeah, they can, they can get messed up. But if, if you know what you're doing, then it's fine. My wife the other day tried to ask me how it all works. And because I couldn't explain to her how it all works, suddenly I was thinking, Maybe I'm more exposed than I thought I was. We hear about all those sorts of things, from identity theft to you know stealing people's personal information to being victimized on various scams. The risks sur l'internet pour plusieurs personnes, je crois, sont um, plus cachés, plus difficiles à, à comprendre. Tous les détails de nos vies dans tout format analogue, comme les photos, uh, mais aussi les documents, les pièces d'identité, tout peut être numérisé et distribué, copié facilement, distribué facilement sur l'Internet. You need to be safe. There are bad people out there who want your information, uh, who want your computing resources to do bad things. So uh, we, should all, um, uh, we should all surf safely. The people want to say what they want to say on the internet, there's not much you can do about that. Je pense que c'est ça la beauté d'internet dans le sens que tout le monde peut dire absolument n'importe quoi, c'est vraiment la liberté d'expression à sa forme pure. I think that there's a light-hearted connotation with anything that one reads on Twitter and on Facebook. First of all, anything you write online, it'd be the same as write as as writing in print, right? All the kind of regulatory rules we have around what you can and cannot do in in in, in print apply in digital. So don't infringe copyright, don't defame somebody, etc, etc, etc. I get hundreds of comments on, on many of my blog postings and uh, there's no doubt that sometimes the conversation degenerates quickly and there are people who are saying things in anonymous fashion, either people who agree with me or disagree with me, and there's sorts of things that they typically wouldn't be willing to say. There's a bit of a myth around, around anonymity on the internet. At the end of the day, unless you've taken some positive steps to hide yourself, you know, to preserve your anonymity, it's very easy uh, for somebody to, um, you know, basically start a court uh, proceeding which unmasks you. From a liability perspective, I mean, it's a difficult one, and it, it, it's a challenging one in part because anonymity often is an enabler for people to speak out. Um, you know, I think, for example, of whistleblowers and organizations who use that veil of anonymity sometimes just to post on, on a site a comment to be able to say something that they would not otherwise be able to say, and, and that is, that's information that they're conveying that's very important. I think that we don't quite know how to deal with the digital age of music and film and all this other stuff. They don't have the resources to go out and catch all the people that are infringing on copyrights right now. And it's, I mean, it's, it's everywhere, everybody's doing it. If I was an artist, I'd be pretty, pretty mad about all the people getting away with like LimeWire and everything. I'd be so mad because I worked so hard to make this music and everyone's just stealing it from me. When you create a new work, it comes to the society in the entire world. The taxes are supposed to be what you do to anyone. It's not to then say, I'm going to expose it, but I can decide how I do it. Once you give it to the others, everyone can enjoy it. I think the purpose of a copyright is to scare people so they don't make stuff on the black market. On the one hand, it is to provide protection for creators, um, in part to provide them with the, what are seen as the necessary incentives to create. 
people will create if they know that they will have certain protections or rights over their work. Ça crée un incitatif de, de continuer de créer ces, ces produits uh, intellectuels, culturels. De l'autre côté, cette création uh, contribue au savoir humain. Society is enriched by these works by having access to them. The very notion of creating something great, whether that's a symphony or a work of art or a terrific novel, and not have anybody read it or have access to it, is seen as highly detrimental to society as a whole. Easier. They can get more exposure. Harder for people to make a living because there's so much stealing out there. I don't think it's any harder or easier. I think it's just, you have to go about it in a different way. And because it's such a new sort of context for selling your stuff, you have to, uh, you know, come up with innovative ways of doing it. Some, some uh, songwriters or singers I've seen on Ellen show because of YouTube, right? So it's good for them and they become popular. So, <laughs> yeah. Over the last number of years, there's been a growing realization that while there certainly are a class of creators who, who need those incentives, who would say that, but for the protection, I wouldn't continue to create, there are many others, actually, who, given the tools and the time, will create for many other reasons, but quite independent of copyright. Traditional distributors who occupy that space between a reader and a writer, for example, someone has to publish the book and get it into a store and sell it to you. Those distributors are suddenly competing uh, in ways that were never possible in the past with entirely new parties who weren't in this space before, or even with the creators themselves. You know, you wanted music in the past that meant buying a CD, and before that, maybe you had a choice between an audio cassette and, a, and an LP. Uh, 45s had pretty much died away even when I was a kid, so, you know, we were getting less choice in the, way, in the manner in which content was distributed. That just doesn't make sense now. I talked to my kids today about what it was like in the old days, and they just think, you know, that's so quaint. You know, now, <laughs> Content gets out uh, all sorts of ways. Um, and it's so easy for uh, rights holders to lose control over how content is distributed. A patent protects, I guess, the inventor or the person that holds uh, that invention. If it was open to everyone right away, then all these other people could just take it and make money off it when they didn't put any initial work into it. Or they could say like, oh, well, then I'm going to improve this right away. So all the work you did got you nothing, but gave me a free ride. There'd be very little incentive to develop new products if you didn't have the assurances that it would be protected in the future. La balance dans, ce loi, dans cette loi, c'est de encourager l'innovation, être certain que les inno innovateurs peuvent tirer un profit de leur travail, mais ensuite d'assurer que les inventions sont tombent dans le domaine public pour être utilisé par n'importe qui. Et aussi, l'invention doit être divulguée complètement euh, au début du, de, de la période de projection pour que les autres innovateurs peuvent comprendre la technologie. Même si ce n'est pas permis de l'utiliser, on peut l'étudier et le comprendre et ça peut contribuer, contribuer aussi à d'autres innovations. Patents are in some ways easy to understand because that trade-off uh, between, on the one hand, incentives to invent, let's say, and on the other hand, uh, public access, are, are much more obvious. We give a period of exclusivity to an inventor in which to exploit, commercialize, profit from their innovations. We want people to conduct the research, we want new inventions, we want innovation, it's good for society as a whole. We also want access, and we don't want to lock down things forever. Um, in a way that would, I think, ultimately, you know, not serve society well. It would be quite harmful if a single company or just a group of companies had had exclusive rights forever, so to speak, on certain medicines or other sorts of things. Businesses benefit from them because they protect their investments. They could possibly generate more revenue for themselves, um, maybe put themselves at the forefront of society, saying we are, you know, leaders in this industry. For their push, it's for having more money, the majority, I think. If you make something that everyone needs, you should be able to benefit from that. That's business. Because you have a monopoly on something, doesn't mean you should be able to set, like, the greatest price. 
there's the inventor, there's the business that's trying to make money off of it. There's the consumer that is paying for whatever that invention is. It probably creates really high prices for things and um, maybe even causes some disparities in the population and forces social inequality. On veut encourager, encourager la recherche et l'innovation. Mais le fait que on peut protéger des aspects d'innovation avec des brevets et exiger des frais de licence, par exemple, pour utiliser ces inventions, faire en sorte que ça peut augmenter les coûts de recherche pour les autres innovateurs qui doivent utiliser euh, les inventions qui sont déjà inventées pour continuer avec leur recherche. Particularly around pharmaceuticals. Uh, there, we're dealing with things that arguably are more important. Um, than innovation or than a, and then a return on investment, uh, and that's health, health issues. So when you craft a period of exclusivity, you're allowing for monopoly pricing, uh, and that has an impact. Monopoly pricing allows for some people being priced out of that market. Uh, maybe not a huge issue when you're talking about Viagra, but significantly more interesting if you're talking about you know HIV or, or cancer drugs or something like that. People priced out of the market equals death. What looks like something very different, in fact, isn't all that different once you, you strip away uh, some of the newness of it. It's old wine and new bottles, so to speak. La technologie en soi n'est pas une, néga une chose négative. Il y a toutes sortes de, de possibilités d'améliorer de, nos vies avec la technologie, mais il y a aussi cette possibilité que ça peut être utilisé pour les fins qui ne sont pas vraiment dans nos intérêts, mais des fins qui sont supportées par le gouvernement parce que ça fait partie de, de, de l'économie. The onus is on, is on rights holders uh, to compete, to experiment, to innovate, to develop new business models to take advantage of these technologies. New technology will emerge, you know, you, know, you can never predict it, right? <laughs> <laughs>